In this video, I'll be showing you how to properly wear the camouflage utility uniform. For the purpose of this video, I'll be wearing PT uniform. The first item that you will put on is your camouflage utility trousers. All you'll do, first of all, put one foot in after the other. Tuck all the excess cloth in there. Make sure that none of it's bundled up. Make sure that the seam right here, along with the buttons, is lined up down the middle of your body. Button them. All of them will be buttoned. And your green skeevy shirt will be tucked in around your trousers completely. Make sure that all the pockets are open, not bunched up, as well as everything else. From here, you'll put it on the belt. All you'll do is put the end of it through the left hoop around your trousers. Make sure that this lock right here is where your button is. You'll put it through all seven loops. Make sure that it's nice and flat around. And you'll put the, uh, the end of the belt right here through the teeth of the buckle. Make sure that it's nice and tight but not too snug. You'll pull back to make sure that it's perfectly lined up. You'll put the teeth in an edge where it can sink into. You'll pull the buckle forward, that way it can sink in as deep as it can. And you'll align the edge of this buckle with the, uh, with the seam on your trousers near, near the buttons. Then you'll put it through the other side through the next loop. It should reach to this first loop at least. It, it has to be at least two to four inches past this little side right here. Once that's done, you move on to your boots. Now I want to point out first of all that on the edge or the end of my laces there are knots. This is so that the lace can't be pulled right through here that way I don't have to do it each time. Just a little uh, quick tip right there. Obviously you'll put the boot on. Make sure that your trousers are nice and up. That way you can get to your laces properly. Make sure that none, the, all this material right here behind the laces is as flat back as you can get it. Now out of the way of the loops or the laces. Then what I do is I just take one big uh, little quick pull. Get all that laces up in there nice and tight. Again. After you pull the laces, pull up on this material right here, that way it's not in the way. From here, you'll just make one good tight knot. And then, however you tie laces, I just do the, the original, whatever you do. However you tie knots, it's up to you right here. But nice shirt, make sure that's nice and tight. Make sure that the laces are somewhat even on each side. And then tuck the laces into the sides of your boots. That way they're out of the way and they can't be untied easily. These boots should fit you pretty well. Your toes should be at the end of the boots just like any regular shoe. They should fit comfortably. These are not uncomfortable boots, so they should not feel uncomfortable. If you do, they're either too big or too small. Same thing with each side, no difference. Pull up on that material, tie that knot, again make sure it's kind of even on each side, tuck that material in. Also the socks that you will be wearing are black socks, black socks that come up to at least your mid calf, they do not have to come up all the way to your knee. It does not matter which brand they are, as long as they are black. All right, from here, all you're going to do, you should have two boot bands. All you're going to do is you're going to place the boot band, these two notches right here, as they go down, and lock it back here, just simple latch. All you're going to do is, depending on the length of your trousers and the length of your legs, for me, I usually roll it about two times. This little edge right here where the seam is, 
All you're gonna do is fold it on that. Small roll, nothing too big. I tie mine twice. The first roll will fold over the seam. The second roll will expose all this light material. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Like I said, below the second notch. Pull the material and trebs down. Fold it over that seam the first time, exposing the white on the second side. Now you're going to stand up so that way your trousers come down and touch the bottom of your boots. Now from here, you should be able to grab the boot band from the outside of the material on both sides and simply flip them up underneath into your trouser. Just like this, obviously you're going to tighten the edges and the sides and the underbody uh, of it. That way it's nice and tight. Around that second notch, you're going to want it to be around that area. It shouldn't look any like saggy or anything. Obviously. It's going to be a little bit just because whenever you stand up, but other than that, it should look pretty well. Same thing on the other side. Again, making sure each thing is nice and tight. Stand up. From here, you have the next item to put on, which is your cam uh, camouflage uh, blouse. Are you going to do? Obviously, if it's buttoned, unbutton it. Now you'll notice the sleeves are unrolled. This is what you wear. This is how you wear them during the winter months. That way you don't freeze. You put it on. No particular order of the sleeves. You make sure that your collar is down. Now you'll notice that there are five buttons. You will only button four of them. One, two, three, four. From the bottom up, up to the bottom, doesn't matter. One, two, three, four. You will leave the button on your collar unbuttoned. Now from here, you straighten out all the material, make sure that your skivvy shirt on the inside can't be seen or anything like that. You should only be able to see your skivvy shirt right here in between your collar, just like that. You straighten out any material that you need to be straightened out. And you'll notice that on the edges of your sleeves, you will have a button. This will be buttoned in one of the three button holes. Whether it's loose, tight, either one, it's preference based on your arms. This is the full uniform. Minus the cover, which I'm about to put on. Now, you'll notice. First of all, the cover does not go completely on your head. There is still space left up in this cover because you don't put it on like an actual baseball cap. You're going to put it on. You're going to use the two finger rule. Put it on the bridge of your nose just like this. And it should t kind of touch right here on your middle finger. Now from here, you're good. You have that uh, nice haircut, obviously. No hair exposed or anything. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna remove my cover. That way, I can show you the three cards that you should have on you at all times whenever in this uniform. You will have your Honor Courage Commitment card. That will be on you at all times. Your United States Marine Corps Leadership and General Orders, just like that. And your Cadet Identification card. Every week that get the, uh, gets this, or not. You'll place them in your left breast pocket, just like that. No particular order. Just make sure that they're in there for inspection. From here, obviously, my sleeves are down. In the next video, I will be showing you how to properly roll them. I'm not going to show you how to properly roll your sleeves for the camouflage utility blouse. All right, all you're going to do, make sure that's nice and flat and everything. For me, I prefer all my buttons to be buttoned, that way they can't just fly open or anything. All you're going to do is face the blouse face down. Sleeves flat out and everything. Obviously, with the sleeves that you're going to be folding first. This you can call that your, uh, your blouse is in the push-up position, I suppose. All you're going to do is uh, heels over head, just like this. Now, the back of the blouse will now be over the collar of your blouse from behind. What this allows you to do 
is fold the edge of the, the sleeve over and not have it messed up by the, uh, the blouse. So all you're going to do is get the blouse a little bit over just so that you can fold this edge over as well. Now depending on the size of your arms, it'll vary about how much you have to fold it over. But the more you fold it over, the more tight it will be and the less you fold it over, the looser it'll be. So the bigger arms that you have, the more back you're gonna wanna come and the less over that you fold it. If you have really tiny arms, you're gonna wanna fold them nice and tight. Now me, I have average size arms, so for me, I usually go in between this first and second buttonhole, just folding it over in between, the edge in between, lined, nice and lined up. Now you're gonna make sure that this blouse is pulled over enough so that way it does not interfere with your line right here, like that. Now, all you're going to do is first of all, you're going to take what I use is my middle finger, my index finger on the outside, and my thumb on the inside right here. In between that material right here, all you're going to do is now push it inside out. On this first roll, all you should see is that normal colored uh, camouflage material, just like that. Make sure it's nice and round all the way around, everything like that. Then all you're going to do is continue folding. Now on this second roll, you should see lighter colored material. From here, you're going to keep, it's important that you keep a tight grab or a tight grasp right here. That way it doesn't unfold. Because you can always loosen the sleeve, but you can never tighten the sleeve once it's already gone. You'd have to start all the way over. Any material that you lose from here, you have to start over. So, as flat as you can get it, as nice and neat as you can get it, you're going to fold again. Again, just making sure that all that material is nice and tight. Checking both sides, as both sides are equally important. Now, for inspection purposes, you will be graded on your sleeves. The higher level cadet that you are, or the longer you've been in the program, the better your sleeves are expected to be. They should be nice and flat and tight, but without cutting off the circulation. That should be what to avoid, definitely, cutting off the circulation. But you also want them to be visually tight and not be able to stick another hand up there at the same time while you're wearing it. Now, maintain the tightness and everything. I'm going to flip it over briefly just for one moment. Whenever you are done folding, you should know because your sleeve should be somewhere up here below the opening of the pocket, right here. So you're gonna continue folding until you get to that point. Making sure that material nice and tucked away. Fold it again. And I remember, like I said, if you are doing something incorrectly and it's just not looking right, keep on folding is not gonna fix it. You're going to have to start over if there's something that you cannot fix. Because if you keep on rolling, a small mistake is only gonna keep on being, getting bigger. And if you need to, iron them. But the important thing about ironing your sleeves is first of all making sure that you don't iron them with any wrinkles or anything. And once you've ironed it, if it's still wet, do not roll them until they are completely dry. Because rolling a wet sleeve will not help at all. It'll be just as hard. So if you iron, make sure that it's dry before you start. All right, now you can see, I'm almost directly below the uh, opening of the sleeve. From here, you can either roll again and see how close up on it you are, which uh, this, what's desired is to be as close to it without actually being right on top of it. But I believe if you think that you can go for another roll, try it. Um, but because you can always unroll it and if it doesn't work out anyways but I'm going to go ahead and attempt to try and go one more roll again while keeping all that material tight in my fingers now if the roll does not work out and it's too far up obviously like I said you can unroll it just one more alright so from here like I said this is the most important one because this is going to be the final roll so this is going to be the fin uh, final product now, as you can see, I kind of got what is desired to kind of be right on top or kind of below the pocket without actually 
interfering with the use of the pocket, or at least the pocket opening. Another thing that you're going to want to look for, specifically what you look for, this is actually the final key of what you're going to be aiming for, is noticing this triangle in the seam right here. Once you have the triangle, you're at least right on top of it or you're close to being good at where with the length. Now, the actual length of the sleeve of where it can be, it cannot go below your elbow. So as long as the sleeve is not right here or below your elbow, you're fine. But it's desired that you get it as, as high as you can without interfering with this little pocket opening. So you're gonna wanna try and get that nice and good for that. Now, I will give you a little heads up. Uh, your first time wearing sleeves up will not be the most comfortable simply because you might not be used to having a bundle of material underneath your uh, underarm, but it's just something that you get used to. Um, if you're chafing or anything like that, that is not normal. Um, something might be wrong with the material, I'm not sure, but it should be comfortable, just kind of in your way, I suppose. This is just one of those things that you get used to. All right. Now, it's okay if it takes you a couple minutes to get everything squared out, but I'm not gonna spend an hour trying to make my sleeves perfect. All right. Now, obviously, from time to time, while rolling your sleeve, you can unbutton it, try and put your arm through. You do not want it to cut off the circulation. You want it to be comfortable while visually tight and also kind of not loose. You shouldn't be able to grab up in there and just yank anything. It should be tight, tight. All right, now for this next sleeve, it is the same thing, but everything is kind of in reverse. Also, it is important that I do not point out with that sleeve, have this button buttoned. It should not be unbuttoned while rolling because then it can get everywhere and it can mess up your, uh, your roll. Same thing. Face down, push up position, heels overhead, just like that. Enough so that the material kind of folds over right at the armpit. Again, making sure that the blouse is nice and flat. Again, for me, for average size arms, right here in the middle between the one first and second button, just like that. Now, like I said, if you need to iron it iron it don't convince yourself that you don't need to if it's all mangled same on each side you're going to want your sleeves to be as symmetrical as possible you're not going to want one sleeve if you're going to go up to the pocket on one sleeve you're going to want to go up to the pocket on the second sleeve they will not be at different uh, lengths. Obviously, it's not an exact science, but you want them to look visually as symmetrical as possible. No one's going to come up to you with a ruler, but you always want to look your best anyways. Like I said, you should not see any of this lighter colored material until that second roll. Now, also an important thing is that your the actual width of the sleeve should be three to four fingers wide. If you have bigger fingers, obviously, then kind of use your brain with that. Again, make sure that material that is all kind of scrunched up is all flattened out and everything. Put it back in the arm. All right, now I'm approaching the pocket of the sleeve. It's one of those things, like I said, where you can either choose to approach it or not. 
and sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you all get unlucky, it all depends on the length of your roll, obviously. Now, I'm close enough to it where if I did another roll, it would probably be too close up on top of it. So this is an example of when you might have to re-roll if you want it to be perfectly symmetrical. So it's actually a good thing that this happened because you can also, with a little bit of fidgeting, you can make it so that the sleeve is a little bit more down. That way you might be able to pull off that second or that next roll, but sometimes it's just not gonna happen and you may have to restart on that sleeve. Now, if you have a good sleeve and you fold your second sleeve and just is not good, don't unroll the first good sleeve just so that it matches the crappy one. You always wanna match the good one. So don't settle for bad sleeves. Sleeves make a difference in inspection. All right, now I have a chance to roll one more time. I'm gonna go for it. Like I said, if it doesn't work out, you can roll back, start over. But if it does work out, then you'll be someone with some good sleeves. All right, now you'll see this button. If I unbutton it, you can actually unbutton it that way that this little side can actually go over. If you can actually get to it. Right there. All right, now it is free. Now it can go over. Now obviously, after you get done fidgeting with it, fidgeting is one thing if at the end of it, it actually still looks good. If it just does not look good, you'll you should know it. It'll look all bundled up and forced and everything. But if this is your first time rolling sleeves, and your sleeves look anything like this, you've done good. Now, as you can see on either side, they're not really bundled up or anything. Their material is pretty straight out on each side. You can see the triangle on each side. Now, obviously, there's a thing that I like to call a judgment call. You can see the sleeve compared to this sleeve. They look pretty symmetrical, but it's one of those things where you kind of make a call based on your own judgment saying whether this is going to be able to be pulled off or not. Um, if it gets to the point where it is way too up on the shoulder, you're going to have to restart no matter how good the roll might be, no matter how good the material might be. But that is how you roll sleeves on the camouflage utility blouse.